So thank you, everybody. I'm Cheryl Hung. I'm the CNCF Director of Ecosystem. And Tally, would you like to introduce yourself? 好的，大家下午好，我先介绍一下哈。Cheryl Hung is CNCF 这个生态社区的这个呃总监，他同时也负责用户社区。所以我们今天主题主要讲用户社区呢。我呢，我姓李啊，我英文叫 Tally。我是 CNCF 中中国区的，我主要负责中国区会员。大家如果以后要加入我们用户社区的话，那么我主要为大家服务。所以如果这个 PPT 结束以后，大家如果感兴趣，对这个社区感兴趣的话，可以拿我的名片，有事可以找我直接联系，很方便。对，哦，那么接下来让那个 Cheryl 是这样 ，Cheryl 会用英文，他是从英国过来，他他他有我们亚洲人的 face， 但他是不会讲中文的哈，他生在英国伦伦敦，所以，<笑><笑>所以呃那个大家如果需要翻译的话，呃，哦，我看大家都没有戴耳机。呃，我觉得是这样，我不知道大家英文有没有问题。如果有问题就举手，我可以中间可以重要的地方我可以解释一下。如果没有问题，呃，我就让 s h e r y 就这样持续进行下去。任何地方听不懂就就举小举手，我马上给大家翻译，好吧？因为我们人也不多，时间是够的。啊，谢谢大家。Okay. Whenever you have, yeah, no problem. Yeah, save time. Yeah, 我们只有半个小时的时间，所以 no problem. Okay, okay. You can no, you stay here. You can sit. Okay. So today, I would like to answer the following three questions:、uh, What is the end-user community?、Um, how does it work? And how do you get involved? So, let me talk about what the CNCF is and what it does first. So, the CNCF, the mission of the CNCF is to foster and sustain, sustain open-source, vendor-neutral projects around cloud-native. So these are the most mature projects, what we call the graduated and the incubating projects, and there's more than 35 projects within the CNCF. The CNCF is a non-profit organization. It's part of the Linux Foundation, and it was founded about three and a half years ago. And the philosophy behind the Linux Foundation is that. Projects are created and developed by open source developers. Developers build companies build products on top of the projects, and the companies earn profits from those projects, and they re they return those back, invest those back into open source development. So, as a non profit. The CNCF is funded by more than 400 members. So here are some of them, and here's some more of them, and here's some more of them. And that funds about 10 staff members, full-time staff.、Uh, the Linux Foundation, as a whole, is about 200 employees. And in practice, the CNCF does different things. So it works on community, providing processes and governance and tools for open source developers. We have technical writers to write documentation and to translate. CNCF pays for security audits on the projects. It holds the legal trademarks for Kubernetes, and makes sure that only those products which are actually truly Kubernetes can use the name. And then it does marketing and PR, and holds events like KubeCon. So this is the CNCF landscape, and as you can see, there's many companies and many products. In this space, but the CNCF doesn't do support, so you can't ask the CNCF to help with technical issues. It doesn't do consultancy, so you can't ask CNCF, "Am I building my cloud-native architecture in the right way?" It doesn't do roadmaps, so you can't ask what's coming in the next six months. And it doesn't do product management, 
So you can't say, what features do I need to be built and can you make the product projects build these features for me? So each of the projects is self-governing. Okay, so what is the end user community? The CNCF was set up as three pillars. The first one is the governing board, which handles the strategy and budget. The second one is the technical oversight committee. And these are nine architects from the community who decide which projects come in and out of the CNCF. And the third one is the end user community. And the end user community has two responsibilities. The first one is to provide feedback and requirements to the projects. And the second one is to act as a check on the vendors. So what is an end user? An end user uses cloud native technologies internally, but doesn't sell any cloud native services externally. So this means that vendors are excluded, consultancies and training partners. So the CNCF end user community has more than 90 companies now. And it's grown pretty fast since 2015, and our newest member is Apple. So with the growth of the end user community, I was hired in October 2018 to understand the needs for end users and to ensure that end users are active and engaged and contributing back to the community. But isn't everything open anyway? You know, why do you want a specific end user community? So you don't need to join the CNCF to participate or to use any of these projects. But often it's difficult for end users to talk freely if there are vendors who are listening in on discussions. And that's why we have these closed mailing lists and closed calls, which are just for end users. So there are three challenges in particular that the CNCF helps end users. And in 20, end of last year, so 2018, um, I interviewed, along with Caitlin, about 45 different end user members to understand the challenges. So the first one is, how do I navigate the ecosystem? If I have problems, where do I go and who do I speak to? The second one is, how can I hire engineers who have Kubernetes experience? And the third one is, how do I make sure that I'm aligned with cloud native from a business strategy point of view? So I want to talk a bit more about each of these three uh, needs. The first one, navigate the ecosystem. This is a quote from the University of Michigan and they're very active within research and high performance computing. So they want to bring cloud native out to academia and encourage adoption with other universities. So for end users, the, diff the challenge is to find companies who are 12 months ahead on the adoption journey and understand what their challenges are and learn from them. And we encourage end users to come to KubeCon, basically, to meet their peers. So we actually include five free tickets to KubeCon if you come and join the CNCF as an end user. And then we also have specific groups within industries. So finance, telecoms, we're starting a research user group, and I encourage and I help users to come together under these groups. Um, the second challenge is how do you engage with projects? So we set up small meetings, small groups, where end users and project maintainers can meet and discuss their problems and their, give feedback to the projects. And we also run an end user partner summit so that end users can meet in maybe 45, 50 people 
and meet their peers and talk face to face. The second one is how do you hire engineers? So I've previously managed uh, DevOps engineering teams, so I know how hard it is to find people who have the right skills. And the challenge is to talk about your story and your journey and talk about what challenges you're facing with your infrastructure so that you can meet the developers and they can meet you and they know what you're doing. And Spotify, they're a music streaming company. So they very active within CNCF through speaking and publishing case studies and talking about their infrastructure. And that's just to appeal to engineers and get the developers to join them. So the goal here is awareness and education. And the more you can talk about what you're doing, the better. And that's why we encourage, or I encourage end users to come to KubeCon and present talks here. Um, the CNCF has a case study writer who will interview you and write a case study about what you're doing. Um, you can have a end user booth at KubeCon, which means that you can come here and just meet the, the developers face to face. And last time, uh, both Uber and Apple took booths at KubeCon so that they could meet the, the other developers. And then we also set up media and analyst meetings at KubeCon. And the, the whole goal of this is to make sure that end users are presented as uh, exciting companies to work at with interesting technical challenges. And the last one is aligning your business strategy with Cloud Native. This is typically companies who are more mature and Bloomberg here, who won the end user award last year, um, have said that joining the CNCF for them is a, strate a strategic opportunity. So they want to participate as much as possible in the technical oversight committee and the direction of the projects. So the technical oversight committee has, and the governing board, have spaces reserved just for end users to represent the end user interests. And there's also the open source program office, which is underneath the Linux Foundation. And this is to encourage companies to contribute back to open source. Uh, and then we also run events aimed at legal teams and uh, educating executives. This is another quote from one of our members. It's not an option for us not to do open source. If we don't get involved with cloud native and take the lead, we'll fall behind our competitors. Okay, so how do you get involved? So. Just a reminder, if you are an end user, so end users use cloud native technologies internally, they don't sell any services externally. So I want to ask you now, uh, who considers themselves an end user, like from an end user company? Mm -hmm. uh, we also sell the public, we have the public cloud service sector, and we also sell the cloud service to the external. So what kind of, uh, what yeah. kind of the roles now? So as we define it now, a company, the membership is one, like the whole company has to come as one membership. So if any part um, has public cloud services, then uh, then it will count as a vendor, example, not as an end user. Uh, Apple also has the cloud service uh, to the uh, customer. It's more consumer facing cloud services. It's not cloud native um, oh. services, though. For example, if um, uh, do people use Apple because it runs Kubernetes? Like, probably not. Um, one of our uh, Let's see. 
like other companies here, like um, Adidas. Does anybody buy shoes because Adidas runs Kubernetes? Like, probably not. Um, although there's one company down there called Zalando. They're a German fashion startup. And when I was buying these jeans, um, I was looking for jeans and I bought them from Zalando because they're very active and engaged in our community. So, you know, I bought it because they use Kubernetes, but most people don't buy, buy their products, right? Uh, no, you would count as a vendor. Yeah. There is a telecoms group, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. No, for, for that one, we're just encouraging all uh, telecoms. Uh, so for the for telecoms, we're encouraging um, participation in the telecoms user group and in the mailing lists without the distinction. So yeah. So so that uh, in terms of the TUG, the no difference between the vendor or the end user. Uh, it's not that there's no difference, but both are welcome. <laughs> um, Anybody else want to discuss? Like, are you do you consider yourself an end user company or a vendor? Okay. No problem. Okay. So this is why my one why my one sales slide my one slide with numbers on it. Um, so there's two ways to join CNCF as an end user. Um, one is as a supporter which gives you access to the first two sets of programs, which is uh, meeting your peers, navigating the ecosystem. And the second one is the hiring and recruiting engineers. Or there's full end user membership, which includes Linux Foundation. And that's for companies that are more mature and looking to align business strategy with Cloud Native. So the end user supporter level is $4,500 or uh, 1,800 if less than 300 employees. And the end user membership is between $500 for uh, academic uh, nonprofits, I think, up to $370,000 for um, you know, Alibaba and Baidu and you know, the big companies. Um, both of these include five tickets to KubeCon. And it's worth noting that it's cheaper to be an end user supporter and have the five tickets than it is to buy five KubeCon tickets. So we're really encouraging end users to come to, to KubeCon and to be involved with the community. And uh, if you've already bought five tickets to KubeCon this year, we can take the receipts and just give you the end user uh, supporter. Yeah, we will reimburse. Um, those five tickets. So we really encourage end users to come and participate. Oh, and yeah, I did another one more, like just a reminder of all the companies that are there at the moment. So I think that is the end of it, end of my slide. So we have about uh, 10 minutes maybe. So I want to. Oh. Okay. So uh, I'm going to pause and ask if there are any questions. You can ask in Chinese, and Tali can help as well. Why don't you uh, go for it? Sorry. Um, user groups, um, do they fall under your purview? Yes. Like user yeah. groups, so like Kube or Cloud Native user groups? Uh, the CNCF user groups, okay. yeah. Do you want to? Yeah. 大家先提问吧，大家那个有问题的话，中英文都可以。我只是想，如果没有，我就想提醒大家，就是这是这个 end user community呢，是我们今后工作的重点。那个调整。
focus。因为在过去两年中呢 ，CNCF 在中国我们发展很蓬勃，我们的会员企业会员现在快接近五十家。但是对 CNCF 来说呢，其实它的我的企业会员和用户会员就像我的左手和右手，我们需要 balance。所以在今后我们的企业会员其实已经相当数量庞庞大了。就为什么 CubeCon 在中国连续两年在办？因为我们有我们会员的数量放在这里啊，在这个比重是很大的。但是我们的用户会员却很少，为什么会这样呢？这一个就是我们的宣传不到位啊，这可能是宣传不到位。我们的用户会员没有意识到有什么好处，所以我们在这方面做的还不够。所以接下来我们的等于说我们左手已经很长了，然后右手还很短，我们要着重发展我们用户会员。其实这个对大家都是有好处，对基金会的。平衡有好处，对企业会员有好处，对用户会员更有好处。那么就是说，今天呢 ，Share 主要给大家介绍为什么用户会员它的好处是什么。所以我，我我们就希望在未来的呃这个发展过程中呢，有大家的支持。然后，如果刚才是这位先生提到说，像我这种情况，我是我到底应该是我我可能都不知道我是属于企业会员，还用户会员怎怎么办？这个可能问题可能不是今天马上就能回答的，因为我们中国企业的构成模式和国外可能不是很一样，所以而且我们每个会员，不论你是什么会员，你是在申请的时候是有一个 period 有一个过程的，那么所以到但申请的情况下，而且是我们的会会费就一般情况，除了你特别高的级别是一年的，是一年有效期，你可能以前曾经是你可以曾经是 vendor， 我转为 end user， 因为企业的不断发展嘛，你的战战略是会变，也可能会从 end user 变成 vendor， 这是和你这是可以这是允许变化的，所以我们到时候可以根据你的比重，根据你的 business 占的比重，我们去考虑申请工他会审查的，然后会单独谈的，是可能需要一个过程，所以不是说特别简单，说你一定是什么一定是什么。所以这个到时候大家如果有意向申请为用户会员，可以联系我，然后我们来分析一下这个问题，帮助大家来定位一下，你觉得哪个对对企业发展更有好处？就像苹果这样哈，它定位为用户会员。其实用户会员，其实，在基金会里面，我们可以看到它其实有很多很多特殊的一些利益的。为什么要成成立用户社区呢？就是为了给 N U 的一个比较 quiet environment。很多 NU 的不愿意和 v e n d o r 他说我的 v e n d o r 已经够多，你不用给我介绍，每天敲我们的多少多少。但是你怎么能够找到很准确的？所以我们给 NU 的一个设计，他能够自己都是 NU 的，他那个很安静的一个环境，能在想我需要什么样的服务，哪些对我的发展有好处，对我的产品，对我的客户有好处。所以我们能帮他建立一个渠道，找到什么样子的企业对接，还有你要找到什么样的工程适合你的企业发展，这些。都是有特色的，我觉得这是对大家大家还蛮有好处的。嗯，其他的还有几分钟大家提问题吧，我就不说了，我的展开没有完。嗯。So, oh. yeah, we have a few minutes, but yeah, I, if you have any questions, then、um, please ask. Otherwise, we can end the session here. Um, um, the, so the telecom user group has only had a couple of formal meetings so far. So the challenge now is to understand what's the priorities for the group, and who can commit the resources to contribute. So I would encourage you to join in the discussions and figure out the direction, because there's no. Uh, there's no single person who is setting the the future. Do I need to、uh, convince any official step to become the TUG member? You or, can or send me a send me an email or send me a just、um, I'll give you my okay, okay. card in a moment.、Uh, any successful story about the financial user group? Uh, that's been running since April, so only fairly more recently. More mature but, than、yeah. the telecom. But more,、group. for sure, more mature than、uh, not more mature, but、uh, there's more success stories in finance than in telecoms. So, in, which place in Europe, America, or Asia?、Uh, there's a handful of companies here in China that are part of the the group as well, but most of it. So far, has come from U.S. and Western Europe. Yeah. Okay. You can talk. Yeah. Go for it.
Yeah, 还有一个好消息告诉大家，就是 N U 的在申请那个 T O C， 就是我们技术委员会的时候，以往是九，我们有一共九位成员是一个席位。那么我们决定在马上就开办为两个席位，就是我的用户会员有两个名额，会在 T O C 里面任职。这个是，就是可以在技术走向方向是有影响力的。OK， great， 呃、uh, ，Thank you very much. We appreciate you coming to. 大家如果需要我的名片，我倒带名片了。如果、yeah. ，OK，Thank、okay. you， 谢谢大家，谢谢大家。